research and training group is on natural hazards and risk in a changing world. So the hazard is what we call of natural events. The probability that some disaster happens regarding an earthquake or a flood or a storm or a landslide. And the risk is in case this happens, what is the damage to infrastructure, to some assets or to people. PhD students in our research training network have the opportunity to work in an international and interdisciplinary environment. Besides the expertise at the University of Potsdam, the students also interact with our partners here at re-owned geoscientific institutions in Potsdam and Berlin. So I have two offices. One is in the University of Potsdam, which is my main office, in which I spend most of my time because also the rest of the group is there. But when I need to do heavy computations, I use my office in PIC. I investigate earthquakes, and specifically earthquakes from a certain region in Japan. I take data from all the stations here in Kyushu and uh, analyze all the waveforms. What you see here is basically are the waveforms and I analyze them for their properties at each location in, in the vicinity of the origin of the earthquake. Uwe and me, who is from geomorphology, we are working on the earthquake sequence from last year in Kumamoto. The interesting aspect is here that we are connecting subsurface processes with surface processes. So you can take the polygons from the same thing. My job was to check how the landslides look like. This black line here is the strip line of the earthquake and the landslides are somehow interestingly converged to the orthogonal direction of the, of the earthquake. So we find it quite interesting and we start looking to the details of it, what could be the main mechanism behind that effect. When we went there, we had the chance to see really diversified landslides. Some of them were really small, some of them were like hundreds of meters high. For me it was quite the impression because for me it was also the first time to come into a natural disaster region and just standing on a fault and you know, okay, this extends now for 20 kilometers and you see an uplift of a half a meter. That's quite intriguing considering it's also not one of the major earthquakes that happened in the world. This group itself, since it's an interdisciplinary group, um, I really like the exchange in, for example, using methods, applying methods from their fields to seismology, because usually the disciplines are like in boxes working, but with the short distances in the building, we have that exchange. The innovation is mainly to the methods because, well, many people argue that things are changing regarding natural disasters, but we do not really know how de de to detect these things. In case we can detect such changes in a hopefully early stage, we want to know how strong are these kind of changes. And last but not least, if we can quantify these changes, we want to predict them for the future. So this is a very innovative question and we try to approach them by new mathematical and system theoretical approaches. Within our net risk chains, we have collaboration. We do share data and certain kind of methodology that we would like to work with each other. My PhD topic is working on some novel approach on quantifying the changes in flood regime. So conventionally, people looking at the magnitude that defines a flood, while I'm looking at the process itself, which is, in my point of view, more progressive, why do I use chaos theory for my PhD? It is rather a novel approach. It is able to study the shape of the hydrograph and hence being able to insinuate the change in the process. One of the possibilities that triggers a change in the discharge is the urbanization. For example, urbanization would increase the amount of soil sealing on your surface and hence it reduces the amount of water that penetrates to the ground. And this leads to the increase of the surface runoff and hence propagates to flood events. Well, last year we had a task force on the flash flood in Braunsbach that event severely hit the village of Braunsbach, which is actually a very small town, and the students went into the field and mapped the discharge processes, but also the damage processes that were visible in the field. 
So we've been there with tablets from each building that was damaged. We were collecting data, estimating the water level at that building, how severe was the damage, did they have any prevention measures. That's a picture from a thermal heat camera. In front we have two human bodies which have red colors because they are warm. And in the background we have the cold temperature and that shows us to up to which level the water was. That movie was taken from residents in Braunsbach. They never experienced an event like this. The rain was very exceptional, like one in more than 100 years. Because the impacts are so severe, they are more and more severe all over the world. So it's very important to identify them, to quantify them and to predict them. That's actually the main focus of our work. And in case we are at least partly successful, this means this can have a big benefit to society. Doing a PhD in the Nutris Change Research Training Network enables the students to explore complex research questions and complex problems in an international and interdisciplinary environment. So they have learned to apply methods to quantify or to predict transient hydrometeorological and geophysical hazards. We have different institutes with different expertise. So it's not only the University of Potsdam, but it's also the GFZ, the PIG, the universities from Berlin. The quality of the research is very high because we have many well-known scientific experts in the group from different disciplines and we have a very good budget funded by the Deutsche Forschungsgemeinschaft. We have a lot of people with a high expertise. We kind of like complement each other. We share similar concerns. It's very inter interdisciplinary. You have many students working on hazards. My topic is on windstorm variability in Europe. So my aim is to understand what are the drivers of the number of windstorms that we see every season um, in winters in Europe, and in particular to understand how much of that can we attribute to purely natural changes and to man-made climate change. These green lines represent their tracks. They represent where they actually propagate. So you can see, for example, these really long lines across the North Atlantic. These storms travel all the way across the North Atlantic Basin. They form in regions off the east coast of America where you have really high temperature gradients. This is also why they tend to be some of the strongest and most destructive storms, and hence why, for my project, I should be looking across the entire basin. I'm very interested to understand how we can predict them because by helping to predict windstorms on you know, 10, 20 years from now, that'll help city planners, for example, build better infrastructure to protect their citizens. My topic is about land degradation and drylands of southern Europe. I want to analyze how land degradation developed in the last 30 years, how the dynamics evolved, and how this depends on factors like the climate, but also land use, which is in my case grazing. I looked at how the vegetation recovers after a drought and how this changes over the years. The timing of at which point the vegetation really recovers gives an idea about the resilience of the ecosystem. This is an extreme outcome of land degradation where you see heavy soil erosion which in the end can lead to such structures. It was very impressive for me to see this gully for the first time. When we walked around there with a local scientist who knows the area, he told us that one year ago you could still walk there. So this happened very fast. For me it's fascinating to work on an ecological topic which has such broad aspects. So um, it's also very important for the society. It's about nature conservation, but it also covers different scientific disciplines. Every year, millions of people suffer from the impact of natural hazards. With the research within Natural Change, we want to contribute options to mitigate such impacts. We are doing this by a better understanding of the underlying processes. That means the underlying hazards, but also the underlying damaging processes. The University of Potsdam is still a small university, so it's a great place to study here and to work here. I really like working as a researcher in Potsdam because there are so many research institutes. I like most that we are such a nice international team and I really enjoy this.